Hey everyone, it's Emily. Welcome to Mama From Scratch. Today I'm gonna to be testing out 15 viral TikTok DIY home hacks that are supposed to work. And let me tell you, some of them did not work. Um, could be used as air, I'm not sure, but one that did work is this trick that I used on my hair to, with absolutely no heat. It is crazy how it works and I can't wait to share that with you. But I'm also really excited because I'm gonna include some DIY home decor for you in today's video, getting that look for less. A lot of you have been asking for some DIYs and I'm here to tell you that you're gonna get some today. So I hope you enjoy them and I hope you enjoy the video combination. If you do, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends. I just love this place to be a place of inspiration and motivation for everyday life. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. All of these DIY home hacks are super easy, and this first one, it's a game changer, okay? So when you have a smaller pillow than your pillowcase, tuck it in on the bottom first, and then the top slowly folds in, and you tuck it into the sides, if that makes sense. You can visually see what I'm doing here. Fold it down, and you have a tailored pillowcase. I feel like this is what they do in the hotel rooms. Is this what they do? This one blew my mind. It worked fantastic. This is the inside of my kettle that has that calcium buildup. So you do equal parts water and equal parts distilled white vinegar. You put it into the pot. I only used half a cup for each, not even very much, just enough to coat it. Brought that to a boil. And this is how it looked, so it's wet, and I wasn't sure like how it would look once it was dry. So I emptied the water out. And remember, this was the before and this is the after, fully dried. It worked amazing. So the next step is actually like a fashion hack, but if you have a longer sweater that you wanna make it a little bit cropped or give it like more of a tucked in look, you pull it through the belt loop. I feel like it would work better if my sweater didn't have the slits on the side, but overall it worked. The other one they suggest is to take a rubber band, basically a hair tie, and tie both ends. Again, I think it would be work if I had a sweater that was fully on either sides, but I don't. And then you tuck them in, and I actually had to kind of tuck them into my jeans for it to stay, but not bad. I thought it worked fairly well if you want that cropped top. Another one I saw was actually used on a sweater and a dress, but basically you cross them over kind of like an X, and then on the inside you hold it there, you tie it again with a hair tie, and then you create like this pretty design to take away some of that extra material. So maybe if your dress is a little bit larger there, it would work. Um, on my sweater, I felt like if unless I tucked it in, it didn't stay as tailored, but it'd be pretty with a dress. Next hack is really easy, and I'm not sure why I wasn't doing this before, but instead of having my onions and potatoes in a container in the pantry where the light hits, they do better in a darker spot with ventilation. So take a brown paper bag, put them inside, and then you can leave that, and then they can be near each other without touching, and they're in a dark place, which makes them last a little bit longer. Okay, this next hack is just genius. I think it's awesome. So for breakfast, you're gonna make poached eggs in the oven. So you're gonna spray your muffin tins. Now in her video, she, it looked like she filled the tins halfway, so that's what I did. But when I looked online, it said only fill it with a tablespoon of water. I think this worked just fine. You drop an egg, however many you need, add a little bit of salt and pepper, whatever other extra seasoning that you want. And then she also made it kind of into a breakfast dish. So she used flour tortillas. I have uh, uncooked flour tortillas, so I just cut those around so it'd be a little bit smaller to fit into my tins. And these are the larger muffin tins, by the way. Um, and I just pressed those in, added some cheese to the bottom of them to make it, you know, a nice breakfast. And then I put it in the oven for 350. Now her said to do it for 10 minutes. But when I looked at the eggs at 10 minutes, they didn't look done. So I left it in for 15 and I overcooked them. You'll see in a second, but it works. So just pop out the tortillas. I added a slice of some cooked uh, ham in there and then you pull out the poached egg. Look how beautiful it is. It's perfect. No fuss. And you only have one pan of a mess. This is genius. I love this idea. And we're going to use this from now on. I just love how simple it is. It was really delicious. Even though it wasn't runny for a poached egg, it was fantastic. I did end up trying with a smaller muffin tin, only doing a tablespoon of water. They cooked up really fast. They had a little bit of a run for only doing it for 10 minutes. So I'd probably do it for maybe eight or nine and have that full run. I don't know. I normally peel a potato towards me. I feel like I had better control, especially using my thumbs for this, but they say don't do that. They say to put it down and then go away from me, which sounds correct and looks correct, but it was so hard to hold on the potato this way. So let me know which way you um, peel your potatoes. I don't know. I like this way because it kind of reminds me of peeling an apple and I don't know. I do that a lot. 
But another one, um, I love to make hash browns. And normally I just use my cheese grater for this and grate the potatoes. And then I like to soak them in some water and squeeze out the rest of the water and then season them with a little bit of salt, some garlic, onion powder, and a little bit of pepper. That's what I like to do. It tastes really good that way. Well, they say to use a waffle iron for crispy hash browns. So I sprayed it like I normally do for my waffles that come out brown and beautiful. Well, I did it. It took two cycles and this is how it looked. It was a total fail and it was a mess to clean up. I was actually really ticked off because it was a pain to get out. And sure, I guess I could grease it more, but I think the cast iron skillet does a way better job of crispifying your um, potatoes. And yes, there was a little bit of oil in there, but uh, it definitely did the job and in half the amount of time. Let me know how you like to do it. This next TikTok home hack is for cleaning and you're gonna grab baking soda. You're gonna pour about maybe half a cup to a cup into your drain um, and then you're gonna let that sit for at least 30 minutes, they say. And then you get just a teeny bit of water onto your sponge and you scrub away. And that baking soda gathers up all of the dirt and grime in those little um, scratches and everything. And you can see how dirty it was. Kind of gross, to be honest with you. Then you take some distilled white vinegar and you pour that down and that will help clean everything. And you do that until it's kind of done sudsing. Um, I used probably about two cups for this. And then you pour down um, some hot water and the shine on my sink was amazing and it was so much easier than using any of the chemicals or anything like that I really like how easy this was to do and it's everything you pretty much have anyways so this was a definite win for me this next cleaning hack is super simple. You're going to take hydrogen peroxide, add it to a cup, and soak your toothbrushes for about five to ten minutes, and they'll be cleaned super fast and easy. No fuss to you. So this next one is actually for cookies. So I didn't have any pre-made cookie dough. I like to freeze some of mine whenever I make them, but they say to shake the cookie inside of a round um, cookie cutter so that you can get it to be round it didn't work for me. Maybe it's because I had the frozen cookie dough already. I don't know, um, but it didn't work. So I decided to um, use a smaller cookie cutter and cut it, but then the edges are all like jacked up. So I decided to use it before I baked the next batch and made them as round as possible and then put them in the oven, same thing, and they came out fairly round. So I would say this um, works better just by using a round cookie cutter beforehand. This next one is just a general cleaning hack that I use, and it's basically taking a damp microfiber towel and cleaning up your walls, not using any solution whatsoever. It just cleans off the dirt from it, and that is from the dog. Is that not gross or what? So you can tell exactly where she rubs and cuts the corners in the house, and I just rub it and it comes off, no chemicals needed or anything. This next one is sort of an organization hack. The way I fold my jeans is I fold them in half and then fold them over and they lay pretty flat. They say to roll them an extra one, but when I did that, it made it chunkier and I don't like that because then I can't fit as many jeans on my shelf. The other way they suggest to do it on TikTok is to actually fold up one pant leg at a time and then you fold it over again and then you fold it in um, kind of like a book. And I think this is fairly good. It's a little bit thicker, but I like that better. So I like doing it just like that. It's simple and it's just the way I've been doing it. So another way they say to make it a little bit smaller is to fold it again in half and then again, and then you fold them into themselves. But this I think would be better for a drawer than a shelf. Um, so it's your preference. How do you like to fold your jeans? I think the flatter, the better. If you have to cook a prime rib roast and you don't have a rack for it, grab your Instapot rack and add it to your cast iron skillet. It works perfect. This next TikTok food hack I thought was really cool when I saw it. So you take a bowl and then you take a slotted wooden spoon and you use that to separate the egg yolk from the egg white. Uh, some people don't like to use the shell or don't want to go out and buy a special tool for it. So I tried this. Maybe my spoon was a little bit sharp or something, but it went everywhere. So I decided I'm going to try a metal spoon and see if that works any better. And it took a little bit for the uh, egg white to separate, but it did not break using this one. And I was being very gentle with both of them. So I think this is a pretty cool hack. Have you tried this one before? 
This one I really wouldn't consider a hack, but it's something you gotta get for the kitchen. It's a salad spinner. I waited so many years to get this, but it gets rid of so much of the water and helps clean the lettuce. And I just pop the lid off and you're good to go. And this is from Ikea, super affordable. So this hack I actually shared almost two years ago from TikTok. And you take a sweater, lay your sweater out, put your hanger on it. Then you're going to take the sleeve and you're gonna run that through the middle of the hanger. Take the other sleeve, run that through the other side. Then you're gonna lift up on your sweat. It's gonna hang like this, so it's no longer pulling on the shoulder area. I prefer to fold my sweaters, but not everybody has an area to do that. And when you need to clean your hair brushes, grab a, uh, like a fine tooth comb, brush that through, add some hot water and a little bit of some soap to it and let those brushes soak for a little bit and then take a cleaning toothbrush and clean everything up. Use that to get out all the lint and dead skin cells and all that gross stuff and then just set it on a towel to let it dry. You know, once you wring out all the water and everything, you'll have a nice clean brush. This next one, I wouldn't really call it a hack, but it's a must know. I've been using it for years, but you gotta get furniture sliders. They make the plastic ones to slide on the floor, and it also comes with the carpeted side that you can just put over it. That way you can slide it on your wood floors or tile, and it makes so much easier, no heavy lifting. You just slide that piece of furniture to its new home. So this next DIY hack is actually for your hair. It's for heatless curls. So I took a Dollar Tree scarf, cut off a bit of it. You can use a robe, that's what most people do. And then you start um, basically twisting the hair away from your face. And then you leave it in overnight, you sleep on it, and you take it out. It works so good. You can just dampen your hair for this, but I actually fully washed it and then started doing this when it was partially wet still. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is crazy. The only reason why I didn't use the the robe um, the robe tie is because I thought, oh, it's so thick, it might be uncomfortable to sleep in, but it was totally fine. So I don't know what the back looks like so much, but this part looks pretty good. It, this is a little bit jacked up right there, but I am I'm sorry. I'm just I'm really impressed by this. So I think it's a little bit cur more curly than I'd prefer. You guys know like when I usually curl my hair, um, it's usually down here more, not so much up here, but my goodness, this is cool. This hack is definitely a good one. I'm gonna keep this one. So I'm just gonna use a bigger band next time. So I decided to do this again, except I used two really thick socks and just tied them together, and it definitely gave me the curls I was looking for, and it was more comfortable during the day than it would be to sleep in though. This is much better of a curl for me. So I think this is really, really pretty now. The ringlet curls lasted me three days. So I thought that was pretty good. This time around, all I did was dampen my hair um, and then wrapped it. And this is the curl that I got. So this was not freshly washed or anything. I just dampened it and did this. So you can see the difference. So this first DIY I'm really excited to make because we are gonna make it out of some reclaimed wood that I've had. Um, if you've been with me for a while, you know I tried putting up a reclaimed wood mantle that failed. So I'm just gonna recycle the wood and use it for these beautiful bookends and it's not costing me a single thing. And I know that may not be for everybody, but you can go out and get some driftwood if you want and use that for this project as well. Work with what you got. I love the way these turned out. And I am gonna use my table saw here for this. Um, and I'm basically making a diagonal cut on the one and to keep it uniform, um, I'm trying to make a straight cut on the next side. So do what you need to. You can also use a chop saw for this or a miter saw um, or a jigsaw, depending on the um, thickness of your wood. Um, you can rent tools and everything. I am using my works table here and using the clamps on it. That way I can have it hold in place while I get my gloves and then this wire um, brush that actually uh, you can hook up to your drill 
and this will help uh, de-stress the wood as well as hammering it and nailing it uh, with different things hitting it against the ground you can do a lot of distressing to the wood and this is a great way it really exposes the grain of the wood as you can see here i think this is just awesome make sure you wear some eye protection when you do this um, but it's really neat and you can hold it in one spot and it will kind of groove into the wood a little bit and give it some different texture it wasn't doing enough for me so i decided to get the hammer out and kind of soften up some of the harder edges on it um, and I hit it against the gravel and stuff I got pretty creative with it just to roughen it up a bit and these aren't going to be exactly the same obviously but I think they're really neat and the older the wood the more detail and uh, texture will be in the wood which is really neat and the more of a story to tell from it which is really neat as well so I just worked with each piece um, basically aging it a little bit and then I picked everything up, blew everything off because it's quite dusty when you do this. Have some beautiful bookends that didn't cost me a single thing, but have that beautiful high-end look, but for less. I'm thinking I might stain them a little bit darker. You'll have to let me know what you think. For this next DIY decor hack, you're going to want some air dry clay. And you're going to take it and split it into two different pieces here and you're going to roll these out into two logs and you want these logs to be about the same size um, mine were about an inch and a half maybe two inches thick i would say um, and i had to do it twice to get the right size that i was looking for to make these decor links uh, or chain links basically and so you're going to make one into basically a donut so you have a giant o here and you're going to smooth out all those edges just make sure that that hole is big enough for the other link to go into so once you perfect that um, and get it all nice you're going to set that to the side and let them dry it took about two days for them to fully dry um, to where I could still work with them um, without them denting so much and then the other piece is going to be made into a very large C that's almost connecting but not quite okay you need to leave that gap there it's very important so we can link it on and all I did was put a piece of parchment paper in between that way it wouldn't quite you know seal together and they were still uh, slightly movable after two days so you're gonna slowly and gently work it over the other other one and that seam that's there that crack don't worry about it. it's gonna be covered up with um, the links and then I'm gonna take some gel super glue add a little bit to the middle and then for immediate bonding I'm gonna add some hot glue that way I can uh, press it together and will hold and then the super glue will stay for the rest of the time and it turned out so good it's so easy to make and you can paint it whatever color you would like which I love because you can tailor it to your decor style so this mirror is something I've been asked about a lot and I actually made it. It's a really easy DIY and it costs way less than you can find online. I got my mirrors at the at-home store and I went ahead and I went to the hardware store and got trim boards. You can get whatever size you want. This board was $6 at the time and I cut it on my saw at a 31 and a half degree angle and I have them opposite of each other. So I'm going to make an X on my mirror and you can overlap them, but I didn't want them to. So I went ahead and marked it where I needed a cut and then I dry fitted it first and made sure it all fit and then you're going to glue those together I just hot glued mine by putting a piece of tape on the bottom and then I went ahead and sprayed them black now when I showed this video I only sprayed one side and you can see the reflection you want to make sure you spray both sides so that all you will see is the black X and it turned out so good it looks like the one that you can find at wafer for way more and it was super simple it literally cost me $46 a mirror to do. So you'll have to let me know which was your favorite TikTok DIY home hack down in the comments below. And if you're already using some of these, let me know that also. And any tips and tricks to improve what I've already shared with you today, let me know as well. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video combination. I had a lot of fun filming this and creating it. So make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And until next time, I hope you have a beautiful blessed day. You can check out my last videos here on the screen, also in the description box below by tapping that little arrow there. And with that, I will see you in the next one.